Okay. <laughs> where my gloves. We've already learned our first lesson today. What's that, Gerard? Yeah, the first lesson is that it, it sucks to to pack your stuff on a on a bicycle. <laughs> and uh, mm. yeah, and I'm gonna I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna put my how I'm gonna carry my, my camera. So I right. guess uh, I'm gonna do it like this, I suppose. Oh, are you? So, oh, yeah, that... I have no choice. Oh, are you gonna? Because I'm already full here. I'm in the tent, and uh... and nothing can go in the bags. Those are full. Yeah, they're they're full, and uh... <sighs> yeah, but th okay. That's a, a, wow. A, I get, I mean, okay. I just want you to be safe. <laughs> okay. Be careful. Love you. <laughs> oh, jeez. Got to tell that story. My name is Sharon, and I've been on the streets for a long time. Paradise here, through the fire, everything. But I've been homeless for years, through Red Bluff a little bit, here when I lived down here, and then when I moved to Paradise to be with my grandma, and she passed away. So I got a trailer, and I wrecked out within a year, you know, being stupid. And then this last year I got, a jail, got hit by a car, and I got a bone disease, so I couldn't walk. Don't call me Pete. My friends call me Petey, but uh, there's a lot to do. I'm usually never staying still. So. I've been out here on the streets for like five years. There's family disagreements, you know. Uh, had nothing to do with them. There was a lot of growing that I had to do, so I, I was I was normal on the streets. So the streets have been good. I'm Kristen. I'm friends with everybody out here, pretty much. You know, like, um, well, we don't have nowhere to go. We all came here together, you know? I went to sleep one night. I woke up and I lost my whole family, you know? I don't even know where my mom's at. I don't know anything, you know? So it's like, and a lot go for them too, you know? Like, same thing with them too, you know? Like, they don't even know where their families are either, you know? We're just those people. And we came here, you know, and we didn't have no hope when we came here, but you know, like we found it while we were here. My name's Robert. And uh, I came here originally from Tucson, Arizona. I've been in Chico 20 years. I've been housed, unhoused, had jobs, lost jobs. Um, you know, just basic life. Well, I'm Amber, and I actually grew up here. I was raised in Chapman Town. My family's like really well known around here, not for like a good thing. Probably about the last two years I've been homeless. Not wanting to pay somebody else's mortgage is why I don't want to pay rent to somebody and help them achieve all their goals and everything. I'd rather just be able to buy land or something and put a mini house on it and then have something to like show for at the end of my life, I guess, and then have something I can give to my kids, regardless of what they do with it, you know? So that's pretty much how I wound up here.
<laughs> Everybody calls me Smiley, I've been called Smiley for a long time, man. I had been evicted out of my parents' home by a SWAT team and a CERT team. Guys in Darth Vader's with M16s and shit to serve me paperwork eviction notice. The reverse mortgage. Yeah. They got tens of millions of families' homes in this country with that scam. Exactly. They know it's a scam. They told our parents everything they wanted to hear. They got them by phone. They called elderly. They used, they, it was, this is a predatory loan at its finest. Talk to the rest of them, I'm going. I'll be back. I'm going to be 60 this year. I'm tired, you know? There's a turtle sitting on the path. Sam? That's a good sized turtle. Huh? It was sitting on the path right there. Somebody would run him over. Uh -huh. I'm Lisa Ed, and I'm one from the ponds. I'm married. Um, I've been homeless nine years. Nine years. That's a long time, you know. But um, it wasn't. I'm from paradise. I've become homeless, but not because of the fire. You know, when mother-in-law died, we lost our home, and now here we are. <laughs> so. <laughs> and me and her dad get along great, and her mom too. Uh, I love her mom and dad. Her mom and dad have been great. Um, I've had to apologize to them for giving their daughter this kind of life. Oh, I've never He's doing the best he can had to worry now. about being homeless. Never had to worry about it. I've always been able to provide for anybody I've been with. You know, no problem. My name's Wayne. I was 57 when I was made homeless for my first time. I'm a homeowner. In order for me to become homeless, all my friends had to disappear. Uh, my mom and dad had to die. Um, there had to have been a natural disaster that wiped out our town. And uh, I had to get hurt bad enough to where I couldn't uh, burn extra money. All those things happened, all of them. And they happened one after the other, just boom, 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 boom. So in a matter of a year after the fire, we were homeless. I'm not sure if these are going to be long enough. They're not quite long enough. Oh, no. You know what? My name is Samantha. I'm his wife. We got married a little over a year ago. We met after the fire in 2018 in Paradise. We met at a, the church at one of the shelter areas that they were not supposed to harass people for camping because they didn't have anywhere to go. Their homes were burnt. They weren't allowing anybody on their properties. But they told you that you had to have to live there on your own property that you own. It or they was ran you off. Impossible. And they ran you off. They ran me off of my own property the second day I was here. You know. Hi, I'm Gerard Ungerman. And I'm Stacy Ware, and the two of us make up the Respectful Revolution Project, a video-based advocacy project that makes short video content about solutions to our most pressing problems. Many of our preconceived ideas and beliefs about homelessness don't accurately reflect what's happening in our own communities. Over the past uh, two years, we've worked a lot with a group called uh, CHAT, Chico Housing Action Team, in our hometown of Chico, California. And this group is basically about providing very affordable housing to people who either were on the street already or were at risk of falling off the bandwagon and being on the street. In our community, we have some combined components that are very compelling in that we've had um, the campfire and more recently the bear fire which are responsible for burning down, you know, upwards of, I don't know, I don't know the exact number between Concow, Megalia, Paradise, and now Berry Creek and Feather Falls. Homes that are gone.
we've got the COVID crisis that we're just starting to come out of, um, shelter in place, and and we've got um, you know an economy in a state where housing is super expensive. So <clears throat> I feel like this community uh, and this county is really at the forefront of a lot of overlapping crises that if they're not already other cities and municipalities around the country and probably around the world are going to be facing soon if not already. The significance of this video is that we've been able to really look from inside at a community of people living in a situation that may eventually lead to a form of solution. And we're not talking necessarily, you know, squatting in public parks. We're talking about letting people create communities, being able to have sanctioned campgrounds, some legal place where they can be, place which are, you know, livable, place which are sustainable, you know, on different levels, where people are able to create community and support each other. And this is very, very, very important because before that, most of these people were kicked around constantly. They were never able to stay anywhere never able to create community that is mutually supportive. And this is you know, what's happening here. And we have been able to create very intimate interview settings to hear from them about their needs, their wants, their problems, and the solutions which, based on their experience, would make sense. So what Gerard and I want to do with this video is we want to give the people that we've met, some of them, the opportunity to speak for themselves and to tell us what they know, what they've experienced, and what they need. And we are going to... Come on through. That's quite right. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to start this, uh, this program, actually, by looking at some of the, the core problems that face a lot of people who are on the street. Often people who don't like people on the street and don't like their advocates tend to point to certain problems, you know, drugs, mental issues, criminality. And, and often these people accuse advocates of, of the houseless to whitewash these issues. So here we do not want to whitewash anything. So we are actually going to start this presentation looking at these issues from the perspective of the people living here. Not all homeless people are crazy, yeah. Um, there, are, there are that percentage that are, for sure. But every population has that. Yeah. Like, most of us have some type of mental issue <laughs> I don't know how to what you would say illness not really illness but you know something that we should be seeing a counselor or a psychiatrist or some beyond some kind of medication or something like that so a lot of people have mental issues out here and they don't even know that they're crazy you know my counselor told me he said are you crazy I said no he said that's your first your first red flag that's when you know you're crazy is when you say no, he said. I have severe, severe anxiety issues that I, I can't, I freak out and then I can't calm down for like a month. Hey, hey, I can't sit in the tent in the dark by, by myself. I like, which I can't live inside apparently. It's hard for Marine to say can't, but. I can't, I can't be around a lot of people. You have anxiety? Yeah, <laughs> lots of it. My anxiety, my depression, and my PTSD, and like all that, I should be seeing somebody for it, but it's not something that I can do right now, you know, with all the COVID and everything. And a lot of these other people have some really deep um, mental issues that should be addressed. <laughs> a lot of people out here have mental issues, like I said, you know, and the ones that have mental issues that seem to be the ones that are like uh, overdosing a lot on heroin out here a lot. And it's sad because what, how, what do they know? What do they, what do they know? They don't know nothing other than, you know, to be here right now, you know? We're, everybody over here tries to pitch in, tries to help the ones that are like that, you know? Try to tell them it's okay, calm down, it's all right, you know, we'll be fine, you know, we're, we've got you, you know? But them being unable to help themselves scares them more than anything because they don't know what's going on up here. 
they don't understand, you know? Yeah. You know, the pain out here, being out here, the pain from not knowing where their families are at or anything. You know, people are overdosing like crazy, man. Not just here, but everywhere a lot lately. It's sad, dude. You know, somebody that I literally love is out there and his addiction really, really bad right now. And I just can't do nothing about it but love him from a distance, you know. I have my own addiction, but I'm just saying some addictions are just not needed. If it's if it's addiction that's going to kill you, why do it? Why do it? You know, if you're fine right now and you can walk well and you can talk well, why do it? We're crazy. We're addicts, you know. I'm, I'm an addict. I think crazy and everything, you know. I just pray that the Lord leads me in the right direction every day, you know. So, because sometimes we go out there and I have a son. He's 40. He's out here with me. I went to prison and he hung with me and I got him back from CPS. And uh, I've taught him what he knows, which is terrible because it's dope, you know. He grew up. Grew up and now he's he's out here on, on an ankle monitor. On one side of Comanche, not not like the whole side, but like on one side there's all the people that do heroin and whatnot. We always have to worry about are those people overdosing and everything and getting fights and bear macing people. And on the other side you have people smoke weed and meth or whatever else they do. I don't even know. There's so much other things that I don't even want to try to even understand what they're doing. Uh, a lot of them do it because why? Because they don't have nowhere to go. They don't know what to do. They're scared, you know, and they just overdose because they just want to, an easy way out, you know, just die and just, you know, so they don't have to deal with it, you know, because a lot of people don't know where they're going to go. When you're forced in a position of a reality that's better loaded than real, than sober, don't, don't you know, don't knock somebody because they have a drink or get loaded because it sucks ass having nowhere to go and having the cops messing with you nonstop for doing nothing wrong, not breaking the law at all, um, just trying to survive. I can understand somebody getting loaded like that. I can totally get, you know, shit. No breaks, never a breath, always, always ready to move. Just got to be ready to pack up everything you have, leave shit behind that matters and go right now. Because if you don't, they'll take it from you and arrest your ass, give you a ticket. How are you gonna write a homeless person a ticket that can't even afford dinner, really? You're gonna write them a $300 ticket. So you're taking them to jail, so they're gonna lose everything they have to begin with, no matter what. what it's anything they have, they're gonna lose when they go to jail. Uh -huh. And it's like, it's a system set up to keep us, it, down. to keep us down, I hate to say it. Yeah, man, it's Mr. Gilmore with his foot, foot on the black man's neck. In the yep. old days they said, it sucks. I hope one day there's a cure for it all. Mine's hereditary. My da dad did speed, my mom did, I mean, my mom did speed, my dad did heroin. And we went back and forth, me and my brother. And uh, I, believe, I do believe it's a hereditary thing in your body, because when I first tried it at 10 years old, I liked it. And I've been doing 50 years now. I'm, well, I'm 63. Just turned 63. So, I don't know. I wish there was an instant cure, you know what I mean? I grew up in the Bay Area uh, with my parents and ended up going to prison for um, possession of illegal gains and uh, I got caught with some money and I couldn't prove where I got the money from. It was for selling pot. I've been in jail for uh, forgery and I spent a year there, a sex offender came in and spent only three months there. Now that's some bullshit. <laughs> I went for possessions, uh, no, for no, not, getting a court date, not going. I had 38 failures to appear in like two years, and then I, they put it all together, and I went into court, and they gave me a, a huge fine and uh, prob informal probation, and then I didn't do it. So when I went back, I went back a year and a half ago and did 40 days. Some people do still. Yeah, there are some people, but 
we try not to have that here as well. You know, we take it out of here. We don't need the cops coming here. We don't need to get in trouble. You know, we don't need it. You know, we don't want the problems, you know? We have to police ourselves as well. You know, we can't, we can't let thieves just keep thieving, okay? We can't uh, let th certain things happen and keep happening, you know? So we have to police ourselves. And uh, it works, it works. Um, you know, there's no, no killings going on, trust me, but there's people that are getting the, the point. And um, that's all we really want is for people to understand and get the point about what this is and what, what they represent as far as this community goes. Because you're not representing yourself anymore when you're in here. You're representing the community. Don't get the wrong impression. <laughs> We're just people like everybody else too. <laughs> if, if it's not mine, I ain't touching it. Right. Period. And there's a, there's a quite a large percentage of people that are like-minded like this. And you know, we, we tend to click up. For anybody who thinks I might have stole this bike, check it out. I got the receipt. I bought it. We work our butt off recycling, and we need bicycles. Actually, <laughs> we went to Walmart to get some cheap food and stuff, and somebody stole our bikes. Not these ones. We bought these the same night somebody stole our bikes. Don't bring a bad apple here, you know, because we don't want that. You know, we want, we want a community that flourishes, we want a community that grows. You know, we want, a, we want a community that gets along with everybody. The bad for me is not being able to have a shower every day or a way to cook food every day. It's hard out here. You gotta find showers, you gotta find uh, toilets. It's, it's quite hard. And when I had my dog, it was even harder because I couldn't go in some of the stores, you know? If she didn't go in, I didn't go in. <laughs> the winter time is the roughest time out here. And these old people, these people are disabled and stuff. I mean, look at her. It's hard out here, you know, and I'm getting older and older. I think I'm one of the oldest women out here, I think. I'm 63 this year. Yeah. Nine <laughs> people died from exposure that winter in our area, just in our little block. Nine, nine people. One of them was my ex-neighbor. And her boyfriend didn't even know she was dead. He was laying down next to her. Well, our health is so bad right now, I've got insurance two different types. I can't even go into the hospital. We don't have the time. We're busy maneuvering and trying to survive mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Sometimes it might be heat. Sometimes it, it, it might be food. Sometimes it, it might be just uh, being able to uh, charge a phone to have it there so you can make a, an emergency call or just to get a hold of your family. Man, there's so many reasons it could get homeless nowadays, man. It's like incredible. Getting somebody off the streets, it's the most difficult. It's easy to get on the streets, man. It's, wow, so easy. But to get off the streets, it gets its hooks into you, man. And you get to believe in you, man, that you aren't, these people tell you and you look at you like yeah. you're a piece of shit. You, you come and send my start to believe it. Like a lot of people don't even, um, they won't even rent storages out to us. Once they found that, when I went to go try to get a storage, once they found out I was homeless, they were gonna be like, yeah, but I could totally tell. But then after that, when I said, well, I need a storage because I'm homeless and I need somewhere to store my stuff at, especially my grandma's pictures. And they were like, no. <laughs> yeah. So many people, I, I see it in their eyes every day. I, I hear it in their tone of their voice, what they say that with their words, have just lost hope. They've lost faith in, in everything. Everything. You know, they've given up on life itself. You know, they'd rather be dead. They'd rather be dead. You know, it helps you. It helps you for that six months uh, to 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 get things prioritized, to get things uh, straightened out better in your life, to get done. And they will help you get your ID if you need an ID. 
Uh, they helped me get mine um, that I didn't have for a long time. Um, they will help you get things accomplished. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I think a shelter is a good idea if it had more beds available, I guess, for people. But like the whole, like I understand there has to be a curfew, like everybody, like everybody does need to be in at a certain time, can't just have people going in and out all night and day, you know, because they're on their own schedule and whatnot. So I understand all that, but it really makes it hard for some people who don't like to have, like me, I don't like to be stuck anywhere that I don't want to be. So like, I can leave my trailer at any time, you know? They piss test you, they breathalyze you, they, and, and they got the heritage now, and it's like a freaking prison. You can't, I can't even go over and see my own sister. Yeah. You know what it is, it's control. They control you. Out here, we're not controlled. We're just ourselves, or you know what I mean? Have a little, little place, like a little uh, tent, and uh, we don't have to be governed. Like, you can't be up after nine. You know, just crazy little things like that, you know, that sometimes get on people's nerves, or somebody picks on you, you know, and you have a verbal, you should be able to talk and talk it out, or, or beat it out, or, but uh, I've, had, I've walked out of there a few times. I totally understand, and I'm one of them, that will not stay at the Torres anymore. I don't care. I just won't. I'm done with that, because it's like a yo-yo. It's like, you can stay, you gotta go. You can stay, you gotta go. You can stay, you gotta go. And it, it's uncomfortable. They don't want you to be comfortable, okay? They, the bed issue, okay? If you take away everyone that's in there, just count the beds, amount of beds, period, in the whole place. Then count how many homeless we have, or houseless, excuse me, houseless, um, that we have. We have way more houseless than we have available beds, period. You know, there's not any options you know, in this town at all. There's one shelter for, for, for single guys, and that's Torres. And that's it, you know, and, and we need more options. Most shelters are indoors, but uh, really we don't need shelters like that. We need uh, the resources of, of eating somewhere to go, you know, that won't be uh, so ostracized and looked upon to a point where it's like they can't even be people, they can't even be themselves. You just need a place where it's more or less a, a, like a land, but it needs, it needs to be sort of like policed, it needs to be structural, you know. I never understood when I was, uh, you know, having my own home and stuff like that, I never understood why it was so messy. The whole like, trash thing like I don't know how people are going to be able to deal with that because some of these people really don't understand that they're a hoarder <laughs> it's not like we're hoarding it it's like we're, we don't know if we'll be able to get that stuff again or the supplies we need for next year because we don't know our, what our situation is going to be so that's why we keep this stuff because then like everybody else you know they got places to store their stuff at we don't so this is how we do it you know, and kind of sucks. <laughs> now I'm just cleaning up my mess that I made. Throwing away all the old stuff, using all the new stuff. Making sure it gets cleaned up because everybody's doing their part, everybody's cleaning up. This part was dirty too, but now it's clean. park is looking a lot better because of you know all the people that come out here and help us and then there are a few people that actually will go out and help that live here too but for the most part most of these people don't care and that's really sad to say because I wish they did. <laughs> you should want it to be clean. Clean is uh, part of the whole uh, health issue you know. In my opinion and I think the city should really think this over Pay us to clean up after ourselves. As stupid as it might sound, it'll work. It'll work. I, I wholeheartedly believe it'll work, okay? And it's a win, 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 all the way around. You, you install jobs in the community. People have a better sense of living, being, you know. Maybe we'll instill something in them to maybe want to get up out of their tent, you know, and go somewhere else, like get a place inside. Who knows? You know, it, it create lots of things for the future.
you know, all in all, I have to say, you know, like, um, I was telling my, my husband, you know, like, um, it's not bad because I used to make fun of people being homeless and stuff, you know, but it's like, uh, it's not all that bad as I thought it was, but the situations, uh, the situations about the food and the laundry and the housing is really difficult, yeah, but I feel like, uh, it's more like, a, um, I don't know, it's just, I feel more grounded for some reason. I feel more uh, at home, you know, like more like, uh, like this is supposed to happen, like this is meant to be, some type of thing, you know, like show me, teach me, you know, learn from it. I don't know, just, uh, I feel like I'm supposed to be here, you know. As far as the way of living, this ain't bad. <laughs> this ain't a bad way of living, you know. It, it's, it's nice, it's a community, we all take care of each other, we all have those fights and stuff, but it's pretty much, uh, it's togetherness here. Yeah, like I said, if I have to, we go buy another one. You know, it's the worst that can happen. We've done that a few times. If you guys had your receipt, you had your receipt for your... Hey, I was thinking I, I need to find it. I should right have the... been in my wallet and... Which one would if I had to? Harbor, Harbor Freight. Freight. Did Jason take right. the part? You know? Yeah, she probably does have it because she saves receipts from... I, I more than likely have months it. Months and months. I and I it's probably... But if she, if you know, she can... Right. But if she Thank can... you for reminding me about a receipt. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Yep. Say it out loud. I'm very grateful for this experience. In the last couple of years, I've made some of my best friends out here ever, ever, I would dream of, that have stepped forward at times of need for others in front of me. Sometimes they need a, a big brother or, you know, someone to guide them. Teachers. There's some good teachers, you know. It's like, Oh man, you can't even believe it. And this person sitting there sharing a cigarette with you, you know, last pinch of tobacco. Yeah. You know, and it's just unbelievable, man. Just sitting there smiling and laughing with you and stuff. And you're looking at this person like, how could they possibly, yeah. you know, yeah, I don't want to go into some of them, but the worst things you could ever imagine, worse than that. And this person sit, sitting there smiling with you, you know, scars all over them about the truth of it, what they'd been done to. Uh -huh and just laughing and trying to pick your spirits up, man, because I'm bummed out or something. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. When we uh, got into our trouble up the hill in the burn zone and we lost our trailer and we were in a dirt patch, we had literally every friend that we have up there, every one of them, they scattered, they were gone. The two people that came to our aid were homeless. They were two homeless people. One of them had cancer. He was elderly. He was like 72. And his name's Jerry. Hey, Jerry. It's good to see camaraderie. Uh, it's that, that thing of uh, people thinking that things are, are dead and gone and they're not dead. They're just uh, daydreaming. Uh, the dream is just keeping it alive. My back room mm -hmm. was tight. Actually. Yeah, it's been an experience, man. And mostly good, I would say. I, I'm a better person for it, you know? It's not a lot that matters, man. Really, when it comes down to it, your family and your loved ones' safety and you're being fed. Stuff, stuff is stuff. It's bullshit. We put so much stock in it, it's crap. What matters is the loved one's happiness, man. I don't care how hard it is. <laughs> I'd rather be this way than having the stress on the, the life that I had when I was uh, married and living in a house and having to do this and do that and do this and do that and do this. It was like so much, you know, and it was so stressful. And I was like, uh, I forgot, like one time I remember I stopped and I was like, oh, I forgot the last time I put my feet in the grass. And now I get to do it all the time. I hate to say this because I, I worked, I used to crawl to work. I was a housekeeper and worked in restaurants. and. Uh, what, oh, there, it's easier out here sometimes than being. It's hard, but it's easier because I don't want to pay nobody's mortgage. I just got my social security. <laughs> I like the freedom of not having to pay rent, like all my, not having to pay all my money to just cover only rent. When I still have my phone bill, my car insurance, my car, you know, gas for my car, maintenance for all my car, like all these other, storage unit, all these other things that I need to pay, and. 
it's, rent is so high these days that like, you're lucky if one paycheck can cover just the rent. Um, when you taste freedom, uh, it's a sense of relief, it's a sense of, uh, you, you know, um, a sense of you're a person again, you're yourself, I guess you could say. So do you think there's a, a dimension of a most intentional community here, to some degree? To some degree, yeah. You, you, there would have to be. They're segregating them. This is the last place that you could go, really. You know, and then they're going to tell us to leave. I don't think so. But there's a lot of people homeless. And just because you're homeless doesn't mean you're hopeless. You can always have another one. What's the thing that you need to move move into your um, your most hopeful life? Like, what do you feel like right now? What's the thing that would help you the most? Money. Showered in a restroom and then to stop harassing us. I don't. Money is good, but you know, showers, a restroom, or even the porta potty, whatever. You know. That's all I need, and, and them to, to leave us alone. I was thinking about buying some of those um, lockers that they have on Craigslist, the little lockers that are from like the old high schools or whatever, and they also have some bigger ones, and have them somewhere over here to where people, if they felt the, like they, their stuff wasn't safe or they, they wanted to go and do something, but they didn't want to leave their stuff in their tent because somebody might ransack their tent because a lot of people do that, um, then they could like, have a lock and just lock, use the locker if there was an open locker. That's what I was thinking would be a good idea to have around here. If we could have a little bit more water like supply out here, a little bit better water supply out here, it'd be much, much better for us to do our laundry and our dishes and stuff like that, you know? The bathrooms with the running water and stuff, like if we had something over here or wherever we were gonna be at, something like that where we can take a shower every day and we can get clean up, then a lot of people would have a better chance of getting a job or, you know, just having a better chance out there in the world, like really. If you look around, it's, it's too congested as is and there's still people coming. So every day there's new people here. So um, the space would be great. Um, just some land to put a tent on. Or like I don't mind living in, in, in a tent, the drive -in theater you know, the, I, I mind the idea that we get harassed. There must be some sort of sanctuary. You shouldn't have to have a place where you have to run and hide. Why would you need to do that? Lucanne, you're. it sounds like you, what would help you and Clinton the most is having what sounds like a sanctioned campground where there's some services yeah. and you have a, a right to be and exist there exactly. on your own. And you charge us, you know, 50, yeah, 50 to $100 or something to, to camp there, you and know. But, and and but have like these rules or somebody to be at the head of it to make people keep things together. So managed. Yeah, yeah, you know. Okay. And I ain't you... asking him to supply me with a, with a, a a a tent that looks like a house, or you know, I have a tent. I just I don't have a place to to put it because they don't want us anywhere here. A piece of property, letting people they stay there for a while, man, to try to get on their feet, to. Um, even like a big ass warehouse by the airport, you know, or something, you know, put bunks in it, you know, but not have it run like a jail. Exactly. Containers, <laughs> like you can turn one of those into a, an apartment for pretty cheap, or you can get a couple of them and turn them into little, littler apartments, like little mini homes, apartments, you know, like, and it would be way cheaper 
for everybody. Like the homeless wouldn't be homeless. They'd have their own little area that they can keep their stuff in, that they could feel safer. We don't need to have a big old mansion, you know, like that little bit of space that is ours that we can lock and know our stuff is safe is a mansion to us, <laughs> you know, like. Uh, I want to get a little place to have my little porch where I can sit down. And I don't have to go get water no more. I don't have to, you know what I mean? I can just sit there if I want to sit there all day. You know, so a lot of times we get ran out and it's, it's, a, it's hard to get to another place, you know, it takes some effort. But uh, I hope I get a little, like the little huts or something like that, little little place like that. There's some of us that you could see they need to be free. They're very free spirited. There's nothing wrong with that either. They just need room to be free. <laughs> Land of the free, home of the brave, huh? Well, there's not too many brave ones, but we're still in the land of the free. They never said the land was for free. Well, there's a payment, I'm sure, somewhere down the line. I wouldn't mind paying a, a small monthly fee for having the facility to live in or whatever and the access to the showers and whatnot because I do get money a little bit, but some people don't get any money, so where do you draw the line on that? I don't know. <laughs> on a slide scale basis, I've heard that before where they make you pay according to your income. Most of us don't want a handout, you know, don't, a leg up for a job or something would be nice. That's not a handout, that's a leg up. That's helping somebody get on their feet and help themselves onto the horse's back. I guarantee you start an area, like, you know, a community. Put them in a community, okay? Get a bulletin board going, a two-way bulletin board. People that need people to work. Pair them up, marry them to the people that are here. Take a chance. I guarantee you, you're going to be really surprised. surprised when you see how many people step up and are your best workers because they appreciate it and they're grateful. People that think they have jobs or know they have jobs and know they have an income will be more in tune with what the city needs and, and, and people need, you know, uh, because of their job situation, you know, and it gives a better, better sense of being uh, to somebody. Uh, it lifts you, you know, lift you up. I suggest getting retraining programs and people just, if they gave them retraining programs, it's crazy a little certificate does to a man's confidence you graduate the class, whatever the case may be, exactly. and you have some job placement opportunity. That would be fantastic. That would be amazing. That would get a lot of people off the streets to, to yep. opportunity to go to, not go to school, but go to a job training to get a job in a reasonable amount of time. Four week course or something like that, a crash course, a smash bang course of, you know, um, we got blessed when the dam broke here. Yeah. A lot of people got jobs and got equipment operator jobs, construction training, that gave them certificates and they moved. They moved away to go with jobs. There's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be worked. That's the whole idea. Get them productive. Get them to thinking enough about themselves. They have enough self-worth that they can do something. Most people here don't have that self-worth. They don't, they don't have that esteem. They don't think they can do it because people have told them they can't do it. And they told them so much that they start buying into it. And of course, and you got the, the element of people just give up completely. And the only thing they're going to do is steal. You know, and there's a percentage of those in there. But I even think those people can be saved if they were given the right opportunity. Campgrounds, they work. You know, give them their own community, they work. Um, give them a few set of rules, you know, police the area, make sure it's clean. It'll work, you know. There's, there's things that have worked historically. Counseling is a good thing too. I think counseling is a good thing. I've never taken advantage of it. I never have. I'm an old school Marine. You fix yourself, man. Pull up your bootstraps. But I'm good. You know, I tried the tough guy routine. It sucks ass. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm going to go get some counseling through the behavioral health. Uh, it's got to be too much. Uh, with Leslie, it was hella different. I had somebody who slept with me and knew my dreams and knew how to deal with me. I don't have that anymore. Um, for us, our ordeal is almost over. We're gonna end up getting, you know, enough to, to buy our property, buy our house, you know, a nice, comfortable living, easily. Even before the, the campfire settlement, 
And so the campfire settlement, just icing on the cake. Um, waiting for everything has been hell. I mean, just trying to get what is yours. I really want to buy land somewhere, and then I want to, basically, I want to make a place where people have a place to be and not have to be like here. But obviously with that, there would be, I would have rules and restrictions and stuff, and the garbage would not be able to, to be part of that. Vision is not having a dump in the middle of all of the living situation because it's not good. It's not sanitary and it just looks like crap and it's just, I don't know. <laughs> but that's really what I want to do. We're taking some people, people with us. some good here. people. People we met out here and we're taking them with us because mm -hmm. some... we cannot, with a clean conscience, leave. L leave someone else that is a good person behind it. That doesn't deserve to be here that doesn't deserve <laughs> to be ridiculed and humiliated and, and, tr and treated like a cockroach I mean, being yeah. eradicated as <laughs> we can't do it to all of them I wish we could I mean I wish we could we can't but we're gonna do it to some bring them with you when you mean yeah when you get like she was talking about give them a place on your property yeah. if they have a tent put a tent up yeah just being able to post up and no no one's gonna tell them okay. two weeks Bryce, you gotta go and know that just to have that peace of mind where you I can sit there and just, okay, I can, I can chill for a while and maybe I can get my bearings. I, I really do hope that people are able to find a way out of it though. If they don't want, if, if they want to be out here, then you know, so be it. But for all of us that, that don't want to live like this, I really hope that they do find a way to get out. But you have, they have to take the initiative and try to find a way to do that though. So, but until then, <laughs> I'll still try to help who I can while trying to help myself. <laughs> but yeah. I know you're trying to help. I know you're trying to help. Come on. Oh boy. Let me hold it one more time. We'll be good. <laughs> 